Join us for a review of the Mercedes E-Class All-Terrain, one of the reviews you have requested and we are really happy to fulfill your wishes. In general, all you need to know in exterior, interior and the driving experience today with the E450 strong petrol engine. In general, everything you need to know about the Mercedes E-Class facelift, no matter sedan, estate or here the all-terrain version, but today with a unique focus on this special version of the estate or T-model, the Mercedes E-Class all-terrain crossover look, big wheels, air suspension. What else? We're going to find out in full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go! In the front here, the new Mercedes E-Class with a facelift receives different front grills, also updated for example the so-called avant-garde trim, but here the E-Class All-Terrain gets a separate own front grille with this design with the holes right there, two horizontal fins and then a grid structure below that, in between, here up and down, and also this stronger lower grille with the high gloss black, so a very strong appearance already in the front and giving us something of this off-road character. LED headlamps are now standard with the E-Class, optional also with the multi-beam high beam function and you can see here one stripe now for the LED daytime running light and then two dots inside signaling this E-Class whereas S-Class would have three dots and one dot then for the C-Class, that's then the differentiation now. And all E-Class facelift versions, also the all-terrain here, the only exception is not the exclusive version with the star on top, but all others get these power dome accentuations on the hood, making it appear more powerful. And now we start our famous guessing game from which side will I enter the stage today? During that, I give you the length 4 meters 92, 16 foot 1, or 194 inches is the length. And here we go. <laughs> Hello. So here we are. Side mirrors fold in at the moment, black cover and also black frames around the windows, put a head on the inside, then the mirrors fold out. And special unique feature for this all-terrain version, here the big crossover cladding right there, front and in the rear. In the rear, however, it's a little bit split here by the rear door, that looks kind of weird. And it always comes with big wheels, 19 or 20 inch. Here today we have the 19 inch wheels, also with an aerodynamic design, optional 20 inch. I think this is also big enough here at the moment, winter tires, so it will look even more impressive with the summer tires then. Yeah, but I think 19 inch you just fine with that. Have a good visual and some more dampening comfort from the tires. Speaking of comfort, this one here, the all-terrain always comes with the otherwise optional air suspension, giving you this carpet the right like in the E-Class. The E-Class and also the Mercedes GLE, one of the few cars left on the market where you really have a very soft ride with an air suspension. And then, of course, the typical estate styling here. The all-terrain version just available as the estate, but here, one of the few estates that's also available on the US market. What do you think here about the design? And here we go with the rear, where the facelift changes for the sedan are a little bit more striking. Here with the estate versions, it's more or less the Talem design, which looks more modern in this dot structure, LED, really cool. E450, the engine for today. But here the all-terrain version is again more unique with this high gloss cover here in the lower area. So next to the hatch and then another one here, well, is it off-road diffuser, shall we call it that way, here in the lower area, really interesting. And then pure fake exhaust, out of fuel, fake exhaust police alert. This is a very good example, the real one underneath not really necessary. They could have done with a good off-road look here without these fake pipes. As for engines, you get 2-liter 4-cylinder or 3-liter 6-cylinder, both petrol and diesel. The main engine for today and also in general for here, the E-Class All-Terrain, will be the E450. That's a 3-liter inline 6-cylinder turbo petrol engine, around 360 horsepower, all-wheel drive, rear-wheel bias, Around 5 seconds is the acceleration figure to 1 km or 62 miles an hour and the so-called EQ boost that means it's a mild hybrid technology.
car key looks like this, really solid, good premium feel to it. And then the door closing sound, very solid as well. Inside of the doors where you control the seats and also seat heating, seat cooling. Then this beautiful matte wood insert here, especially in sunlight. And then the interior here with the new steering wheel, capacitive buttons, new design. This is a standard steering wheel. Optional, you can also go for the AMG line with the AMG line design, where I have a two-spoke steering wheel design, which looks sporty, and the steering wheel itself is also a little bit smaller. I would recommend that, actually, as for the steering wheel. Seats, there are different versions available, and the good thing is here that the E-Class offers a wide variety of sustainable animal-free seats. For example, especially for European markets, you can get here fabric on the inside, also for the all-terrain, and then leatherette or Artico Ambitex looks like this on the outside in black, beige and grey, so it's ideal for keeping cool in summer and warm in winter and having a great premium look to it. The US market for the all-terrain will probably then feature full Artico or Ambitex seating also in different colors. Um, this one here you see at the moment, however, the optional animal skin surface. Getting inside, nice seating comfort here, of course, in the E-Class, good, you know, sedan seating position, or in this case then the estate. And when I put the seat all the way down, like this, one means A6, six, six with one, still leaves home headroom here when I have the panoramic roof installed. And uh, let's see, also open it. So it has a good wide opening, nice spacious area and leaves so much light in the interior. If you want more headroom, however, you would go away with this panoramic roof, but yeah, it's definitely nice to have it. And here, steering wheel up and down, electric control, always a very helpful feature that you can also adjust it while driving. Now welcome to this interior view. Usually the new E-Class facelift always comes with digital instruments now and also this widescreen format, but in 10.25 inch left and right, this would be standard. Optional or standard here for the all-terrain version, the wider, bigger setup, two times 12.3 inch so two times the bigger screens and this of course a very impressive setup. Zoom more details to all of the screens, to both screens, very, very interesting. And then you can see you can get, get different decor elements here, the matte wood for example. You hear that, also feel that, no fingerprints, also here in this middle console final, really very nicely done. Then I like it that we still have the manual climate unit here so we can control it while driving in a very nice way. Then we have here on this matte surface cable connection for your Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. And um, underneath the smartphone here also an inductive charging pad. Then adaptive cup holders. And then there's this touch pad you can use for the infotainment system, for example. This is also quite helpful and you can also write an address on that if you like. And here the dynamic select, this is then for the driving modes. And we have this middle armrest in a split way and then you have a yeah, place for your microfiber towel or car key and um, all the two more USB-C slots. Interesting detail is also that the back mirror is frameless, really beautifully done, good view to the rear and also a beautiful simple design element. Yeah and then this new steering wheel once again here, capacitive buttons on the left side for example you slide or you click for the cruise control settings and it is for a capacitive steering wheel well done, but still the older buttons, the real ones were better to use, especially while driving. You just don't get the best feeling on the right side here, slide for example the volume or click once for muting. But still, I mean it's a more clean design, but then again not real suitable to use it while driving, that's the thing. Hmm. And then there's the voice input, which is always fun to use, either with pressing it here on the steering wheel or say, hey Mercedes, hey Mercedes. How can I help? Drive me to Berlin. And that would be, for example, the GPS input. Route guidance to Berlin is starting. Yeah, that's very nicely done. And you can also have some other things like um, activate head-up display, for example, if it's not activated yet, and so on and so on. This is then here, the GPS, which has yeah, quite good responsive times, 
happy with the software right here, use it by a touch, use it with the right thumb here on the steering wheel that is possible or then with the lower touchpad possible too. And interesting here for example for the comfort setting, the um, ambient lighting, um, different colors and so on, this is always really fancy to use. Of course, ocean blue or purple sky are my favorite ones. The massage is really nice and of course also an option here for example with the wave massage. It also goes to the seating area and this is good for long drives that you also have some movement on the seating area that you don't get like you know <laughs> fatigue in your lower area and that's um, definitely a good thing to have right here. So the menu is actually quite simple, CarPlay accessed by this and when we listen to the sound system, which is not the optional Burmester 3D sound system here, but the standard one, I mean yeah there is a very notable difference to this optional Burmester sound system but it already does the job, let's take it that way. And here once again if you want to take a look at the CarPlay integration. Interesting is also this update for the rear view camera. See right here, a great resolution in general for the rear view camera. Oh, nice ambient lighting as well. <laughs> and then there's this fake drone from above. And there you can see two things are happening now with the face. First of all, when I turn the steering wheel, the camera pans with me. And that's not the real mechanical one, but it's that's done in the image. So the image is actually more widescreen and then the camera software changes in that image and that's definitely very helpful and then here you see these blue lines around and the thing is then uh, when I approach something that these blue lines adapt to it and have additional visualization of what's going to happen to you so let me get close to this object there right? and then you can see the blue line will adapt then as soon as it's you know, approaching it here we go. So here you can see it goes in, also gets an acoustic warning. And this gives us an even better um, estimation of what's going to happen. Um, yeah, but is it really that helpful? I don't know. And here we go with the digital instruments. You can slide with your left thumb here in this menu with the new capacitive buttons. You can change the middle part and then you can also change what you want to have on the sides here, for example. So this is also possible. And then you can also go to this whole main menu and switch around everything else. You can have, for example, GPS map in there. This is, of course, really helpful. So you can have it like this, but you can also go for the full screen like this. And then it's all over the place. This is, of course, one of the most helpful features always of the digital instruments. Last but not least, you can change the whole styling here as well. It's always nice to see, for example, for sports gauges, this is one of the options. And the head-up display, a little bit difficult to see it now in brightness, here with the current speed, a loud speed, or some GPS information, a very helpful feature, definitely. As for the rear, you have soft touch at the inside of the doors here as well, and again, this beautiful matte wood insert, wow. And it would be easier if you put the seat a little bit higher to put your feet underneath it. Usually it's also more comfortable if you sit in the front and have the seat a little bit higher. Um, but here already the recess of the seat does fit. You have to think about this a long vehicle already. And then there's not too much legroom considering the length of the vehicle. Of course you get along with four or five taller adults. And here then the headroom is also still okay. Here the panoramic roof, you see it's split. Really nice, you can also um, put down this shade here. Um, have it opened or closed and in the middle seating area of course there's this middle tunnel here because it's a rear wheel driven platform or an optional all-wheel drive as we have it today here of course um, yeah but here then hmm, yeah it's okay to sit here more comfortable than with the four tall adults isofix outside and folding seats is not possible from here you do that then from the trunk and here you can put down the ski hatch or ski um, ski opening so there we go some cubby holes inside here and adaptive cup holders and in that middle console here you can open it have two more USB-C chargers and a real climate unit electric hatch here standard and really cool here for the T model or T model estate the wagon here this long loading area one meters and 15 you can see here the luggage fits easily inside and the width here is 
also more than a meter right there. Really cool. And the total height, this is important, almost 75 centimeters. This here, the cover automatically goes up and down. The cabin trolley also easily fits in here in a vertical way, no problem at all. So, so much flexibility here underneath. You have so more space. If you go for the plug-in hybrid version, by the way, there will be a step in the trunk. So I, in this case, really don't recommend it. Here, you can fold the seats from here. It's easy fold function. Also at the other side, then you have, wow, this is actually the reason to go for this version. Oh, the total length. Yeah, this is a two meter stick, full two meters in length. Welcome to Thomas's Driving Lounge with the Mercedes E-Class E450 All-Terrain, the state version, the das T-Modell, <laughs> that's in German. Yeah, I made that a little bit exaggerated, yeah. So, um, Sport Plus mode, here we want to test the performance of that engine first, inline six cylinder, about 360 horsepower, about five seconds is the acceleration figure, one kilometers or 60 miles an hour. Let's drop behind a little bit and see a safe passage entry into the motorway. We accelerate from 30 kilometers an hour to whatever. Let's go. Well, that's 140 kilometers an hour. I'll tell you guys blocking us at the moment, but really good acceleration. And now we can test how is the acceleration when we are already at speed from 120 kilometers an hour. That's 200 kilometers an hour, 125 miles an hour, and I mean, this is here the so-called off-road version or uh, crossover version. And super silent once again, the E-Class, one of the most silent vehicles on the market. Maybe just the S-Class is a little bit more silent at higher speeds, but here at 200 kilometers or the 125 miles an hour, what the perfect noise isolation. It's like driving 100 with some other vehicles. Now on the brakes, good feeling to that as well. Um, lane changing also at higher speeds, car remains stable, although we have the air suspension. It is delivering us a very comfortable ride, yes, but it's not shaking up too much. And especially here in the Sport or Sport Plus mode, it's getting stiffer, so we have less rolling of the vehicle, so you always remain flexible having these drive modes. So, really cool from the acceleration, and also quite nice sound here, six cylinder sound, really like that. So, definitely one of my favorite engines. Now, we go back to the comfort mode, relax a little bit more, we go into the tunnel and in that tunnel we can always see a little bit more, for example, of the, of the, it's coming there, and some buffers probably, right? So here, for example, we can set the ambient lighting, the brightness, it's all the way, oh, right there, let's go to the reptilian color. I think we should go here, ocean blue, there we go. That's better, right? So here, beautifully done. We can see the blue better here to the interior. Yeah, that's how it's supposed to be. So really cool as for the very central ambient lighting in the tunnel. And then once again, what a relaxing motorway vehicle, really perfect as for the air suspension. The big wheels are actually okay. And also steering wheel feeling, it's not, you know, really harsh or hard. Um, it's rather a very soft setup. Um, you have to like that. Um, there are sp more sporty behaving cars. This is also not the AMG line or something. Um, so that always depends on, you know, and then you have this, you know, effect from the seat where it goes left and right from the bolsters to keep you a little bit tighter in the seat. Also very interesting function here with the E-Class has been um, for quite some for quite some time. So, of course, you don't feel the sporty here in the E-Class, especially not with the air suspension, but such a great comfort both in seating and as for the suspension, that's what you really should appreciate about the E-Class. When you go with the standard suspension with the E-Class, by the way, here for the all-terrain, air suspension is standard, which is of course cool, but even if you go for a more budget version of the E-Class, I mean, we've been driving the standard E-Class suspension 
with the 20 inch wheels in the US near Vegas and even that was great comfort so although they have so many different suspension options you know um, the standard one also has an yeah, 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 somewhat adaptive dampers but you cannot adjust them and then the option B above that would have adjustable dampers as well also like you, you know with a sport one so it has an effect on it and both are great and the base suspension is also really great so I would always say this one here the all-terrain with the S suspension with big wheels with the bigger infotainment system and so on is like the dream estate Mercedes so everything in it almost of course you can always add more options but if you think about this is quite cool but can I just go for base E class it's also possible of course you know so um, it will still offer you a lot of comfort at a really, really decent price because when you spec an e-class in a you know normal way even don't exceed too much too many options then it's always the case that you can easily also double the price and then it gets really really yeah really really tough on your budget definitely sitting here cruise control on the steering wheel you can slide with these new buttons and sliding means one or two kilometer like one kilometer down one kilometer up steps if you click you do get this kind of feedback that 10 kilometer steps or when you press the minus button it's like um, you know you adjust it then to the um, you know to 10 min minus 10 or if you haven't it set before if it's off like cancel here and then you press it then it's the actual or the current speed so here once again in tunnel with the beautiful emmy lighting always like that such a spectacular effect and then let's go back to sport plus mode to have the biggest boost boost and once more acceleration from 100 kilometers up to let's see where we go That's 177, and what, what's going on here? Oh, okay, now we can drive again. Here we go. Really stable once again, also in this high speed corner. Two kilometers an hour, 125 miles an hour. Now I do a lane change at a really high speed, although having air suspension. Yeah, really stable, very good in control. Sport Plus mode is keeping the air suspension tight like an IMG. Wow. So nicely done that you can adjust it really, going from this air carpet soft ride to a sporty ride, which really comes closer to an AMG model as for the suspension. Really, really nice. Now harden the brakes here down to 120. Of course, you can't deny the weight of the vehicle, no doubt about that. And then you think you want to have some calmness and comfort again switch it back to the comfort mode and then you have that suspension you know flying you over the road once again definitely driving wise you can just confirm that the Mercedes E-Class all-terrain is one of the dream estates on the market and now to some city driving here with the E-Class in the all-terrain version air suspension E450 so this air suspension of course always gives you this you know air carpet <laughs> rider like so very soft comfort really nice and you do have the big wheels here yes in this case the 19 inch wheels and of course the bigger you go with the wheels the less comfort you have in general still the E-Class offers you great comfort even if you go for bigger wheels but here I think the 19 are definitely enough I mean it's definitely a striking look but if I would think about going for the 20 inch I mean we had it before in the E-Class it was okay but I would really stick with the 19 inch there's still a good compromise you always have a great visual appearance already mesh massive but going for 20 inch wheels I think is not really necessary here so and also you can have it depend, depend on the driving mode, eco or comfort mode, the air suspension is really soft and so on. In the sport mode, for example, then 
gears are sh um, shifting differently, so you can put the gear lower than always, and the suspension is also a little bit firmer than so. You can also vary that, and also take the individual mode if you want to have individual settings. For example, here in the comfort mode, the steering is really light. Mm, it feels still quite natural. You have to steer a little bit more than with the competition, but that's depending on what you like best. Here it's a little bit more comfortable just running straight then, but you don't have a dead zone area, so there is a reaction from the car even on small commands. The new steering wheel is very well to control, definitely. I do prefer the new AMG steering wheel, which is a little bit smaller, it also has the sporty design with a two-spoke design here. This one here with this closed area and this slot. No, not what you th thought. I said slot with O. <laughs> with a slot in the middle. Um, really strange design indeed. Um, yeah, I don't know. Not the biggest fan of that. And also controlling the capacitive buttons while driving. Whew. Yeah, I mean, you did have these touchpads before, but they were somehow better to control than these ones here now, especially because you don't know like when you're going left and right, when up and down, you, you know, slip. Ah, it's really, really very tough. So I tend to use at least a lower touchpad or something, or then the touchscreen, but here in the middle, you know, there's not, mu not much anything else you can do. So, hmm, yeah, again, not the biggest fan of this new development. I think it's a step backwards. Other than that, it's a fantastic ride once again in the E-Class, also in the city. I always say it's all Mercedes you need. If, for example, people ask me, like, do I need a Mercedes S-Class? And I always say, like, take the E-Class, it's smaller, you can, it's not a tiny car, you know, but it's smaller than the S-Class, you can get around the city a little bit better, uh, you save a lot of money, you have better seating options, um, you know, S-Class only available with one fabric interior when you ask it at the dealer. Here, the E-Class, available with so many different, I think, Europe fabric, article, um, and text like mix, and the best ones available actually these mixed seats with fabric parts and leather parts. You have full article um, parts if you or MB, full MB text parts when you rather want a slick surface to be wiped clean and so, so many different variations. AMG line then um, with the E class with um, Dynamica microfiber and so on. So a lot of things that are actually easier with the E class and also if you compare the new S generation, this is still easier to control than the new S class. So um, yeah, as for that and the comfort is perfect. You have a great long-term comfort in these seats here as well and also such a great noise insulation also when being here in the city and you can just relax in every single ride you have. That's so cool. As for the fuel economy here with the E450, this being now the inline 3 liter 6 cylinder with the EQ Boost, so a mild hybrid technology to something you know about 360 horsepower. You can score some, yeah, some more well, like nine liters on 100 kilometers. That's possible um, if you don't exceed it, or if you, you know, use a little bit more cruise control and so on. And that's some, yeah, some well 30 mpg. Um, you can, you can, yeah, at the moment here 9.3 liters, for example. So 30 mpg plus is definitely possible with this vehicle, and the mild hybrid technology does some of the job, definitely, but. This inline six cylinder is a good engine in general, definitely. So I think at Mercedes in general, this is the engine to go for at this moment, no matter which model you have. It's the one I prefer in driving from the power output, from its calmness, from its sovereignty. So you can drive it at so low RPM because of the big displacement really very nice at the same time you have a great power boost great power output we showed it to you earlier on the motorway so to me this is my favorite mercedes engine at the moment we've been driving it also in the gle in the gls and also they are performed very well in the fuel fuel consumption and we had the comparable diesel to it and meanwhile with the diesel having so many different filters and double triple whatever injection then the diesels have gone up in the consumption. So here the petrol is not like a 
really disadvantage anymore as for that so I would really go for this engine and, and I mean always the view where you're staying at the traffic light and by the way when I'm close to the traffic light also the camera will appear that I see the traffic light through the camera because there might be situations where you can't see it from here something's blocking or the traffic light is mounted too high beautiful matte wood design right here so um, that's always something very precious to have once again go on a little bit of motorway now and here Steering right, I have the bolstering effect on the left, steering on the other side, and the left bolster pushes me a little bit against, so I'm being kept in the seat by this active system. It's nothing new for this E-Class generation, has even been present this technology in the E-Class generation before. So once again, I'm going to the sports mode and 60 to 80. Blop. That was 87 already. Oh, you saw that, you know, the car wasn't really that sure, was accelerating first, but then decided, ah, let's do another kick down. Um, hmm. So, I mean, how you can not do that like this? The shifting pedals are very well integrated and have a great tactile feeling to it. So, ah, very pl pleasing sound. I was like, click, clack, clack. So, this is really cool. And then you can shift down yourself and have an even more spontaneous acceleration, so that's possible too. However, let's go back to the comfort mode and let's test some of the assistance systems. Uh, yeah, they are also now all on the steering wheel and that's of course, whoa, that sun is blinding now. So, at least I can say it's better than in the new Volkswagen capacitive steering wheels, which are to me the absolute, wow, what the fail. <laughs> So this one being capacitive, still somewhat okay to control. You know, especially um, the cruising toll, you press once on set minus, and then it's the speed you currently have. And that's also what I expect. And here you can see, so I'm not steering at the moment, just loosely keeping my hands on the steering wheel. And even here in this, um, you know, in this um, construction site, the car is actually keeping the lane. Oh, not here, yeah, not in this case, yeah. So, <laughs> never trust in it 100%. So, there is the green symbol for the active steering assist. It's also set on sensitive. So, but that's, you know, that's the thing. You, you can trust on the system some, at some point, but not always like 100%. So, yeah. It's better, of course, to relax a little bit more on the motorway but never rely on them forever. You can also set it a little bit differently in the settings here with the active lane keeping assist. So this is like sensitive. Let's go to standard, see if that changes anything. Yeah. So obviously the standard setting is, seems to, I mean sensitive does, sounds like, sensitive sounds to me like it would react earlier, but. I have more the feeling it would react later a little bit. Hmm. Maybe you just have to try around with it. What's your fitting setting then there? And then have to see how. Let's see in here now. Cruise control is accelerating, traffic sign recognition. And here now with the wide lines, which are typical for Germany, here the standard lane keeping assist is doing a great job. This is also then perfect actually. Let's see the sensitive approach. Does it change anything? This moment. I don't know. You know, wants me to keep the hands on the steering wheel. It's now working in capacity. So yeah, I, I'm used to like shaking the steering wheel a little bit for that. But I show you that it's also differently uh, possible now with the new capacitive function. So now the car should start to say, Thomas, evil Thomas, take your hands on the steering wheel once again. There it is. And now, there it is. You see, I just need to touch it. Capacitive function. And then the car knows I'm here. And this is done for when I really keep my hands on the steering wheel as supposed to and drive straight for a very long time, like thinking about some, some interstates or something um, in the middle of nowhere. And then you get these false positives in the car. It's always, you know, annoying. You're like, you have your hands off the steering wheel, but you still have, you know? So um, this is then actually prevented by that. Once again, what a great companion here for the motorway, especially. And now to our conclusion for today with the Mercedes E-Class All-Terrain. Yes, for sure, one of the dream 
estates on the market. A great unique look with this crossover cladding, big wheels, air suspension, great comfort. On the inside also a high trim level and, especially on the European market, great seating choices also available, not today, but in general different colors for the fabric leatherette mix. This is also then perfection then here in this segment. The US market then most probably get the Artico MV text in a full way seating then. So I really like the unique styling. Interior could be a little bit more space on the rear bench in general for an E-Class, but nice updates they have there also for the infotainment screen with the MBUX latest version. Big screen setup here standard for the all-terrain. Yeah, and then about this capacitive steering wheel. Hmm. I mean, while driving it's quite okay as for the steering input, yes, but controlling it on the buttons while driving is harder than before. That's to me a stack backwards. The AMG line steering wheel, by the way, for the E-Class face, this is really cool, it looks fancier, it's also better to handle, also smaller and so on, but there, again, the capacitive buttons, I think this is one of the step backwards. Everything else has been nicely updated here with the face lift, also new with the tail lamps, whereas the sedan, however, looks way more different than the pre facelift version, whereas the estate version here doesn't look that much changed. So, what do you Think about our driving part also for today. Good also this inline six cylinder engine. I can really recommend you to go for this one if you go for a Mercedes. Of course, not the cheapest choice, but that's definitely not the all-terrain version of the E-Class. Looking forward to your feedback. Is this your favorite E-Class? Is this your favorite estate? Put it in the comments. Let's discuss this vehicle here and also see you next time.